So today's content framing question is, what does a deeper exploration of word choice reveal in Alvin Ailey? And your craft question is, how do I use research in explanatory writing? All right, so here is the first part of your classwork for today. So I want you to follow along as I read the following sentences, and then you are going to answer this question right here. So the question is, how are the two sets of sentences similar and different? So here is one set, and here is the second set. Oops. All right, so that first sentence says, he walked down Central Avenue. Second says, he walked along the sidewalk. And then they walked down the alley. Now the second set of sentences are directly from our text, as well as the page numbers here. He strolled down Central Avenue, or he strolled Central Avenue. He dawdled along the sidewalk. Alvin and Ted crept down the alley. So now what I want you to do right here is I want you to write down what's similar between the two sets of sentences and what's different. All right, so from the examples from the classwork, um, I just want to break it down for you some more. Um, that he strolled Central Avenue. Um, that word strolled means walked slowly and with pleasure without a particular purpose. So that tells us that Alvin enjoyed Los Angeles if he's strolling down Central Avenue. The second sentence says he dawdled along the sidewalk. Dawdled means walked slowly and wasted time. So that shows us that Alvin spent a lot of time around the theaters in Los Angeles. The last sentence reads, Alvin and Ted crept down the alley, which shows that Alvin and Ted were being a little sneaky and trying to see the show for free. So when we think about authors' word choices, we need to remember that authors pick certain words to give us more details. So now taking a look at the last paragraph on page 27 of our book, uh, we see some words like haughty, strutting, sassy, revelry, suede, and gloried. Um, all of these words give us more detail and we're able to imagine what's actually happening in the story, right? And so um, by having the words suede and gloried, we know that the audience liked his work so much that they even moved themselves to the music right and his company gloried in their dance meaning that they're super proud of their work right their haughty attitudes they dance with grace and with pride um, we know that they were walking proudly when you're strutting um, as well as revelry which means noisy fun and so we know that the men were having um, fun and joy as they danced All right, so now we are going to move on to our figurative language. Um, so here is a page from Alvin Ailey. Uh, Ted tried Catherine Dunham's Bahiana. Alvin slapped out a beat on his knees and followed Ted's lead. Slowly, Alvin began to move. He curled his shoulders from back to front and rippled his hands like an ocean wave. He rolled his hips in an easy, steady swivel, dancing with an expression all his own. Alvin moved like a cat, smooth like quicksilver. When he danced, happiness glowed warm inside him. Dusk crept over the city. The streetlights of Central Avenue winked on one by one. Alvin made his way back to East 43rd place. That night, Alvin told his mother he'd seen black people performing their own special dances. It was a show Alvin would never forget. And actually, this passage is also going to be a part of your question set today um, but what I want you to write down first is I want you to write down four examples of non-literal language that is found on page 15, Alvin which is this page so I want you to list four which I look carefully um, and I'm going to have a graphic available for you right here of what uh, non-literal language is all right, so a quick review of what non-literal language is. It's also known as figurative language. Um, and so I wanted us to remember that it's language that means something other than the exact meaning of the words, right? For example, we've talked about simile, metaphor, personification, um, and other examples like onomatopoeia, alliteration, and hyperboles. Then I want you to 
answer this question, how does the figurative language in this passage develop your understanding of Alvin Ailey? So again, how does it add to your understanding? Um, how do you gain more knowledge about Alvin Ailey through the figurative language that Andrea Davis Pinkney uses on this page? So that's what you're writing here. Okay, here. What does figurative language do for, for you as a reader of this book? Okay, so I just reworded that question a couple times. So please take some time to think about it and write your response here. Knowledge. Finally, this chart. I I want you to pick one of the words from page 27, that last paragraph, one of the words that I circled. I want you to write down the words, what that word means, and how it added to your understanding of Alvin Ailey. Then I want you to write one of the examples you picked from up here. Um, and I want you to write, here, write it here, tell me the meaning of that figurative language, what it means to you, and how it adds to your understanding okay. of Alvin Ailey. All right, so this is going to be your last formal writing piece for third grade during remote learning um, assessment 6a focusing question task one. Um, so your task is to conduct research about the life and work of Alvin Ailey. For someone who has not read about him, write a four paragraph essay answering the question, what inspired Alvin Ailey? Okay, so one, um, I want to say that today you are not going to begin your writing planner or your essay, but you are just going to be doing the research part um, about his life and his work. And now we know our audience, we're writing to someone who has not read about him before. So you need to introduce to your write reader um, who Alvin Ailey is. We know we need to write four paragraphs. Um, and our prompt is what inspired Alvin Ailey? Okay, so our essential idea is that Alvin Ailey was his dance and his choreography was inspired, right, by different possibly people or things or himself throughout his lifetime. Um, and so I want you to be thinking about the two supporting points in your thesis statement. So you're going to have to think of at least two sources of inspiration for Alvin Ailey. So in your work, use information from two of the following sources. Um, so the first one is our text that we've read, Alvin Ailey by Andrea Davis Pinckney. Uh, we can use this book as a, we say, secondary source um, when talking about research because it doesn't come, the story doesn't come directly from Alvin Ailey. Um, but instead, right, we've talked about how uh, this book was written after Andrea Davis Pinckney and her husband Brian Pinckney interviewed his family members, his close friends. They did research on the different types of dances he was inspired by and what he taught. Um, and so that's why our text isn't necessarily a primary source, but a secondary source. Um, that goes the same for the back matter from Alvin Ailey. Uh, I will have that read aloud to you again at the end of this video. Um, and then the third source that we have listed here is a primary source such as the video of Catherine Dunham or the interview with Alvin Ailey and Catherine Dunham. So I'm going to play that video as well later. The interview with Alvin Ailey is very short. Um, if you would like to try to find your own video on YouTube or on Google of an interview with Alvin Ailey, um, please, I encourage you to do that because again, in third grade, one of the skills that we're supposed to practice is learning how to research. Um, and so if you can research your own and if you can include the link so that I can double check to make sure that it's a real primary source, uh, that would be great. Okay. And so today you are going to be filling out this sheet, which is your research note catcher, which is basically just a page to kind of um, organize your notes. Okay. So here is your checklist for success. Um, we know that we're writing an explanatory writing. Um, piece. So we're explaining something. We're explaining what to our reader, what inspires Alvin Ailey. Um, so you need an introduction, a thesis statement, two sources of inspiration for Alvin Ailey, uh, facts, definitions, and details. That list should sound familiar because those are examples of evidence. Um, explaining what inspired Alvin Ailey, right? Because you're going to have to have evidence and elaboration. 
linking words that connect ideas also then as well as um, those linking words when you're providing more information i'll provide a chart an anchor chart with some examples of linking words um, in tomorrow's assignment um, also one typed body paragraph well haha you are going to type all of them because it is on the computer or on the tablet and then finally a conclusion so including those four paragraphs right the introduction your two body paragraphs that include your two supporting points which is going to be two sources of inspiration and then finally your conclusion paragraph okay so i just want to emphasize again that your classwork for today is that this document as well as this research note catcher okay so going through this you're going to use this to collect some notes so here in the first box it says source so this is where you are going to write either the book or the video that the interview that you use um you're going to write that down here if you're referring to a you're going to write book um obviously you are going to be writing the page number um and if you're talking about an interview then you don't need to write anything here um, then here you are going to write the source of inspiration you understood from what the source is telling you and then if you have if you want to write any direct quotes from the interview or from the book you can just add a quotation mark here and type up whatever you wanted to um, possibly include as evidence right the text says or in the interview says and then here you can just write any notes that you also want to take note of um, when so that you can have more ideas for your writing piece um, and so yeah these are some more boxes um, so that you can continue writing your notes you don't have to fill out all of these boxes you do need to fill out at least two because we do know that you need at least um, two really two uh, pieces of evidence which is the two um, sources for your research um, so either the interview, the text, or the back matter. You need to pick two out of the three that was included um, in our task sheet. And that's it. So now I'm going to read you the back matter as well as play this interview uh, short video on YouTube and then your question set for today. All right, so here is now the back matter of Alvin Ailey by Andrea Davis Pinckney. Um, this is one of the sources you can use for your research for your focusing question task one writing piece. All right. By exploring the African American cultural experience through dance, Alvin Ailey changed the face of American dance forever. The Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, AAADT, was one of the first integrated American dance companies to gain international fame. Two years after the creation of Revelations, Mr. Ailey's company performed in the Far East, Southeast Asia, and Australia on a tour sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Since Mr. Ailey founded his company in 1958, it has performed for an estimated 15 million people in 48 states, 45 countries, and on six continents. In 1965, Mr. Ailey met Judith Jameson, a vibrant young dancer whose talent and energy inspired him to create Cry, a piece that honors the struggles and triumphs of black women. That 1971 work is now a popular Alvin Ailey classic. Mr. Ailey was born in Rogers, Texas on January 5, 1931. During his life, Mr. Ailey received many honors. In 1982, he received the United Nations Peace Medal. He was awarded the Kennedy Center Honor and the Handel Medallion in December 1988. Mr. Ailey died on December 1, 1989 in New York City. Today, under the direction of Ms. Jameson, the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater still mesmerizes at audiences everywhere. Mr. Ailey's dance tradition continues at the Alvin Ailey American Dance Center an accredited dance academy in New York City where boys and girls study ballet, modern dance, and tap dance. The Alvin Ailey Repertory Ensemble, the resident company of the school, is a troupe of young dancers who perform throughout the United States. Something. 
Alba, Mrs. Dunham once said that she's a little bit concerned that not too many people really understand her work, but clearly you do. What is it that gives you that advantage? What I want to say is that I, I think Mrs. Dunham put the black dancer on the map. When I was coming along, when I first got, got involved in dance in 1949, there was nobody around. I didn't see anybody around as a role model. It was not a, until the, the Dunham Company came through that I knew that black people could do this kind of thing. I mean, that black material, I mean, from Africa, from the Caribbean, from America itself, could be presented with elegance and style and class and also say something about our history. Alvin Neely, all Alright, so here is your question set for today. The directions read, read pages 12 through 15 of Alvin Ailey by Andrea Davis Pinckney, beginning in the middle of page 12 with Catherine Dunham and her dancers and ending with Alvin would never forget. Uh, look at the illustration of Alvin Ailey and his friend Ted on page 14, then answer each item. So we're going to start here with page 12. Um, Alvin and Ted crept down the alley. Oh, wait, oops. Catherine Dunham and her dancers swirled and lunged to the rhythms of West Indian drums. They were famous for Babiana, a spicy Brazilian routine, and for a sizzling number called Rumba with a little jive mixed in. Alvin Soul danced along when he saw Catherine Dunham's style. Alvin nudged Ted. What is it that they're doing? What is that? He asked. That's modern dancing, Ted said. Watch this. So you can see... Ted and Alvin in the back here. And Ted and Alvin here. We can assume that the boy with the red shirt or reddish orange shirt is Ted because he just said, watch this, right? Showing Alvin his dance moves. So page 15, Ted tried Catherine Dunham's Babiana. Alvin slapped out a beat on his knees and followed Ted's lead. Slowly, Alvin began to move. He curled his shoulders from back to front and rippled his hands like an ocean wave. He rolled his hips in an easy, steady swivel, dancing with an expression all his own. Alvin moved like a cat, smooth like quicksilver. When he danced, happiness glowed warm inside him. Dusk crept over the city. The street lights of Central Avenue winked on one by one. Alvin made his way back to East 43rd place. That night, Alvin told his mother he'd seen black people performing their own special dances. It was a show Alvin would never forget. Alright, so words to know. No, soul, the part of a person thought to be the center of feeling, thought, and spirit. And quicksilver is mercury, no, mercury, a liquid metal that is silver in color. All right, number one, read this sentence from the passage. Alvin moved like a cat, smooth like quicksilver. This sentence shows that Alvin's movements are A, quick and sharp, B, slow and heavy, C, clumsy and choppy, or D, easy and graceful. So again, thinking about the word that we just read from the words to know box, Quicksilver, to help you understand what Alvin's movements were like. Number two, which sentence best tells how the illustration on page 14 helps readers understand the passage? So the illustration on page 14 is right here. A, it shows the boys joy in dancing in this new way. B, it shows how the boys help each other learn to dance. C, it shows the friendship between Alvin and Ted, or D, it shows Alvin's surprise at Catherine Dunham's style. And finally, number three, what is the main idea of this passage? Again, main idea, what the text is mostly about. And for this particular question, again, just referring to pages 12 through 15. A, Catherine Dunham and her dancers were famous for modern dancing. B, Alvin watched Catherine Dunham perform the Bahiana and the Roomba. C. Alvin learned the Bahiana dance by watching his friend Ted. D. Alvin was inspired by black dancers performing a modern dance.